Which brings me to uh, Steffi Bulldown. He's doing he's doing well for himself in, in boxing at the moment. You've got to take your hat off to Steffi, and he's in a tough time of it at the moment. It's uh, I know we all call him the ginger ginger pubes or uh, the bearded wonder because he's got like a big bushy ginger beard, hasn't he? I mean, so he he does get a, a bit of stick from being. Well, you know, ginger, and uh, I don't want to, you know, have a go at him for being ginger. But uh, he, he's doing really well in that, and you've got to, you've got to take your hat off to him. It's been a struggle for him, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's been a roller coaster. But he, he's, he's developing champions out, out in that gym at the moment. Uh, you know, he's got, uh, he's got Josh Whaley. He's a British champion, and. I'm trying to think who else he's got. He's got Josh Whale anyway, hasn't he? So he's got he, he trains Josh Whale with his dad. They've done well with Josh. He's injured at the moment, but he's had other champions down there, and uh, he's doing well. And I wish him all the best. Hope he gets more champions and puts on more great shows like he did at Doncaster Dome overnight. That was a barnstormer of a show. Shout out to Anthony Tomlinson, six and zero. Oh. He. Uh, he won the other night, uh, so I hope he does well. Anthony, uh, he's six and zero. Oh, he'll be looking to get another win soon. Uh, so, which brings me to our show with Dennis Hobson, 27th of April, Ice Arena, Sheffield. Liam Cameron versus Nicky Genman for the Commonwealth Middleweight title. Should be a good fight. Uh, it's a decent card that's on. Uh, little kid, what's he, I forgot his name now. Tommy Tommy Frank, he fights for a, for a, for the title on the on the night. Little Tommy, he's a bantamweight kid, is he? Forgot belt he's fighting for now. It's uh, Dennis has had a pull out with Danny Butler. He's pulled out, so it's Nicky Genman. So should be a good show. Live on Free Sports Channel 95 Freeview Sky Channel 424. No, we don't want to copy Calder, do we? Doing that. So, but I'll be ringside there with Rico and Terry Chapandama. You know, Dennis has begged me to go. But uh, I said I'll go, Dennis. Seeing as seeing as you need me, can't call me out, but I'm looking forward to the night. And uh, I've got some people coming there on the night. Uh, I'm gonna wear my new suit. I've got some people coming there from out of town, and some things lined up for the rest of the year. Some matchups to do. So I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, I don't take a penny out boxing. I do it from goodness of my heart. It's uh, become a bit of a hobby become a bit of an expensive hobby as well as regards time and effort and, and money as well it's not it's not cheap to be in boxing but I think that if you can create something like what me and Dennis have tried to create we, we, with what we've got going up there at the moment it's things can sort of you can look back on it and feel quite a chi quite proud I know Dennis feels proud when uh, He, te he tells me when he, sometimes we've had many a session where we've been sat up till four in the morning talking about boxing. Many a session. I mean, I think I've had five holidays with him, five five days at a time at Jersey. So probably got twenty five nights there sat up till three in the morning, four in the morning talking about everything bo boxing related. Uh, He's very proud about what he's done with Clinton Woods. He's very proud about what he uh, he did with uh, Ricky Atten. We all know uh, the story about what happened with Ricky and Dennis. Uh, broke Vegas with Ricky. Uh, got him to make up a fight, and you know Dennis weren't, weren't required no more. Then once he got him to that fight, which. I can understand they got they got to the big payday against Mayweather, and uh, I suppose Dennis could feel a little bit aggrieved that he didn't get his slice at pie on that fight because he did get him there, did pull all the strings with Bob Arum and that. But 
that's boxing, isn't it? You can you can work with people who you think are your best friends, and then once pound notes can become involved, you can still be friends with them people. There's other people who put the spoke in, isn't there? And that's boxing. It can be awful. And I tell people to the face if they have a problem with that, come and see me. Nobody seems to come and see me. Come and tell me if you don't like what I say on here. I tell it straight. Dennis has done a lot of good things for people in boxing. Ricky Atten, he did well with Dennis. Uh, Clinton Woods, he's a millionaire now, lives in a big swanky, swanky place up at uh, Ridgeway Moor. Smack opposite Dennis's farm, farmhouse, smack opposite. You know, all millionaires up Sheffield live up there. Clinton's done bad, he got out of it with all his faculties. Mil mil multi millionaire, he's not skint. And that's the name of the game, get in. British Commonwealth, European and World title and get out with your millions. Now, some people do it and they don't beat anybody. Some people do it and they have an harder route. Some have a harder route than others. It does, is that down to your promoter or what? I don't know. Is it down to your skill level? For example, look at Ryan Rhodes. His skills are off, his skill level is off the charts, isn't it? Never won a world title though. Why? They put him in with that Grant, didn't they, when he were a kid? Maybe he wasn't ready, I don't know, but they put him in with him, didn't they? And he were a light middleweight. If he'd have been fighting light middleweights at the time, he would have been a world champion then. Because he beat Silky Jones, didn't he? And he, would, he had a world title, didn't he? You know, when he fought Ryan, I think, he'd, I think he'd just lost his title then. Or would it before? I think he'd been a world champion before then. He didn't have a world title about when he fought Ryan, I think he was for British, but Silky, uh, he was a world champion at light middle. Ryan schooled him, didn't he? Now, Ryan Rhodes, you'd have to put him down as probably him and Errol Graham, you flip a coin, the best guys not to win a world title. Were it down to matchmaking? Were it down to luck? I think a bit of both. I think Ryan Rhodes were a light middleweight. I think Errol Bomber Graham. I think we're unlucky. Respect to Barry Earn for fighting Julian Jackson. Who they thought Errol had beat him because Julian was really a light middle, wasn't he? Bomber Graham got iced, didn't he? And then the, did Bomber Graham fight somebody else as well with Charles Brewer? And he was winning that fight, wasn't he? Just bad luck. Sometimes, the, sometimes it's just bad luck and you can't, you can't pull it off. It's not the fighter's fault, it's just bad luck in it, but every time I see Ryan Rhodes at a show, I always think, oh, you know, you, you sat with greatness. That's what I always think about people like that. I look at Ryan Rhodes and Billy Joe Saunders and I think that the skill level's at the same. Skill level, maybe Ryan's is a touch better because he, he's a southpaw, isn't he? But the skill levels are the same. It, the, you know, but Billy Joe's maybe been a little bit protected earlier on in his career and he's still a little bit protected now isn't it? I mean we keep hearing all this don't we about Billy Joe's gonna fight Golovkin, he's gonna fight Canelo well who was he fighting? Willie Monroe, Lemieux and now he's got Martin Murray so we've heard all the shouting haven't we? Willie Monroe, Lemieux Murray. That's it. Billy Joe's last three. But all the way through that we've heard Eubank rematch, Canelo Golovkin. But, as I'm going to say again, Willie Monroe, Lemieux, Murray. I think we'll end that on that for that. For that. What do you think? I've mean, proved my point there, haven't I? We all got carried away with all Frank Warren's hype. It's like we get carried away with Joshua's hype. Calling out Wilder. Calling out Tyson Fury. He called out Tyson Fury, didn't he, after he fought Tackham. Calling Fury out. And then he's just fought Parker and he called Wilder out. But Fury and Wilder are not going to fight Joshua, are they? Not next, anyway. Now, it's utter bullshit. Bullshit with a smelly bee.
be for bullshit. I don't like bullshit as me. I like people that keep the word and do the job properly. Now, Joshua's not fighting anybody, is he? Who's Billy Joe fighting though? Yeah, he can fight. Oh, Billy Joe can fight. But who is he fighting? Who? We keep hearing about Canelo and Golovkin. Who? Willie Monroe? Lemieux, who'd he beat? Lemieux. Come on, who would Lemieux beat? Come on. Taylor made for Billy. Billy's a world champion, Olympian. You should have done that to him. He's done his job, hasn't he? It's Martin Murray next. Martin Murray. But yet Golovkin's got a date there for 50 May. Ooh. Once it looked like that fight were off, Billy had an injury, didn't he, all of a sudden? Oh, Billy's injured. Because Billy, I've been told, were offered that fight. Well, he's saying he needs a bigger camp and he wants to be right for Golovkin. No, in my opinion, what Billy wants is more paydays. Billy will beat him now, Golovkin. So why prolong it? Why overcook it? You've got too many... Too many cooks spoil the broth. You got Frank Warren, he, he, he's behind it all, isn't he? Who, who is Billy Joe fighting? Who is he fighting? Come on! You've got a thoroughbred here, Frank. Get him in with Golovkin. If you could have took that fight on 50 May, take it. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear any more excuses. It's becoming fucking boring. It's becoming fucking boring, Frank. Get Billy Joe in with somebody. Which brings me to Tyson Fury. Okay, now who's he gonna fight next? Ali, we're out. Ali, Ali came back, he fought Jerry Quarry, right? Muhammad Ali fought Jerry Quarry and then he fought Joe Frazier, was it? Did he have one or two fights before Fraser? I think he had Jerry Quarry before Christmas, wasn't it? And then he had, or, or was it January? And then he had Fraser, wasn't it? After that, the main man who were knocking everybody out. I mean, his story is Tyson Fury needs four fights, and they're all going to be on pay per view. Are you having a laugh? Pay per view? Who are these pay per view fights going to be? I mean, we stick it to Eddie Earn, right, don't we? We stick it to Eddie Earn for these pay-per-view shows, don't we? So these shows are going to have to be good that Tyson's going to be on. I mean, I can see him doing a show with Billy Joe and it being pay-per-view, but I can't see it being Golovkin. I can see it being Tyson against TBA and Billy Joe against TBA. Selby rematch through Warrington. Frank will want to get mileage out there at Ellen Road again, won't he? Uh, who's other world champion Frank's got? Tyson, he ain't got a belt, but he's, he's like class as champion, isn't he? Billy Joe. Selby. Who else is there? There's another one, isn't there? What's happening with Anthony Yard? He's only just give up his Southern Area belt the other day, last week. Why has it took that long, Anthony Yard, to give that belt up? What are you doing? You're world rank number two. Why have you held that belt hostage? Why is Terry Chapandama from the New Age Podfather not said anything about Yarde holding belt hostage? Because he said that Frank Bullione were, were holding belt. So Terry, come on, let's talk, talk about these people that are holding belt hostage. Who's them two kids that are fighting on Carl Greaves' show? I forgot now. Carl Greaves has got a show with two kids fighting at Featherweight, both good kids. Uh, look at that. Fucking shit, aren't they? Batteries on, on, uh, on iPhone 5s. Who are them kids fighting on that show? Who are they? Who? Well, who are they? Uh, I'm trying to think of the names. Carl Greaves has got a good show on, two kids fighting for the third word, my, name, my, my memory has gone blank, I've had that much going on today. Two good kids, uh, he's putting a good show together him, Carl Greaves, he, he's going places him at the moment. I've got Carl Greaves shows, they're going above Steffi Bull's shows at the moment. Because uh, if you take Josh Whale out of Steffi Bull's shows, 
a little bit thin, aren't they, really? Uh, no, no, I don't mean that as a slight on Steffi. Obviously, he lives, he lives in the same village as me, but... Steffi Bull shows, without Josh Whale, they're a bit thin. And he knows it as well. He'll know that. He can't keep getting away at Donny Dome with them shows that he were putting on overnight, which were a decent show. Anthony Tomlinson's fight, what best fight. But he, he needs TV. That's why he's working with Dennis. He needs to get his fighters on TV. And he puts his fighters as piggybacks on other shows. But I'd like to see Steffi Bull step up and have his own TV. Steffi should take a slot off Dennis with free sports. Pay for production and put some money in. I mean, you can keep piggybacking on other people's shows, but you have to go to that next level yourself, don't you? Is Steffi Ball going to step up? I wonder. I'd like to see him step up. I'd like to see Steffi step up. He knows what he's on with. Yeah, he's got a few quid. I'm sure he could do that. He's a wealthy man, Steffi Ball. Very wealthy in his own right. I'd like to see him, though, go to that next level with TV. Get his fighters some exposure on TV. At Donny Dome shows, that'd be great for Steffi, that. Maybe Sky could give Steffi a slot, or Box Nation. I mean, Steffi wants to work with everybody. I'm sure he worked with Frank Warren, or he worked with Eddie. You know, he, he could be his own man then, couldn't he? Instead of, like, the guy that needs... Instead of, like, Eddie Earn ringing him up and wanting to, to get a win for one of his lads, and Steffi putting his lads on Eddie's shows. Why not be your own man? Like, a bit like Carl Greaves, he's like his own man, isn't he, at the moment? I like him, that Carl Greaves. I'd like to see Steffi do that. I'm not being critical there, I'm just talking, talking boxing. But yeah, I think that I'd like to see Steffi do that. I wonder what Ingram and them think about that, and, and, his, and his mate, Ingram, what's he called, Mikey. I wonder what they think about that. Yeah, I think that's maybe, yeah. I think that's maybe good, but I'm looking forward to Dennis's show at Free Sports on 27th. Uh, I think it's a good show that we're putting on. I think that's, I think that's going to do all right. I'd like to see Tony Bell. You come and have a drink on that night. Come and have a drink with us, Tony. Come and sit ringside with Dennis. We'd love to have you there. And Coldwell, you're more than welcome. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. That yeah, it's good for everybody in boxing to get on in it. Eddie Earn, you could come as well, Eddie. We'd like to see you there, and your dad, Bazza, he loves a drink, doesn't he, old Bazza? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm sure we'd, we'd, some, some of our people around here, we'd like to say hello to you all. Frank Warren, you can come, old fish eyes. Make sure you bring Andy Aylin. Yeah, but one of my friends loves to meet Andy Aylin, so he'd so he's like to say hi. Yeah, it'd be a good, good show. Francis Warren, you can come as well. Ambrose Mendy, Richard Poxon, you can come as well. Ray Atten. All them can come to, to Dennis's show, they're all welcome. It'll be a great night, I think. It'll be a great night. It'll be a good show. It's a great show, actually, what's on. Yeah, I think it'd be good. But uh, the show at the moment, I'm trying to think of the, the kid who was fighting. Now, the Carl Greaves one, it's a British title. That is a good show, that. I was looking at it over there. I put a tweet out about it. I said, that's a good card, that. Really, really. A well thought out card. It's going to be on Boxing Social as well. Neil Kettlebury's place. Uh, station. Glenn McCorry uh, is going to be the commentator. Good setup that one Neil's got there. That's a good show that. And Glenn's doing commentary on uh, Dennis's show as well for free sports. He's busier than ever, Glenn. I'm proud of him. Johnny Nelson, he could come to Dennis's show as well. I'd love to see Johnny Nelson there as well. Company man, Johnny Nelson. And you could bring Adam Smith as well if, uh, if you three have not locked up Adam Smith. For his computer, yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? That, yeah, I think that'd be good. That, yeah. So, great. Time is marching on. Let me see how many minutes I've got on this last bit because I've got things to do. Four minutes. What can we talk about in four minutes? Who do I think is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world? Lomachenko. Who's second? Golovkin because I had him beating Canelo. Who's third? Crawford, Crawford's third, they're your top three, Lomachenko, Golovkin and Crawford, and Lomachenko's got a defeat, but the guy came in overweight, didn't he, and won it his first or second fight, second fight I think, won it, and for a world title fight, 
So, who do I see as a big star in boxing in the next five years? I see Mark Efron winning a world title at 168. Mark Efron. And I see him beating Callum Smith in about five years when they fight. Maybe less. Maybe less. I'd like to see Mark Efron fight Callum Smith for a world title. Maybe less, maybe three years, but Mark Efron, I begged and pleaded, Dennis, please, please, sign these two people. He said, who are they? Mark Efron and Stacey Copeland. I've heard Mark Efron's a messer, he said, and Stacey Copeland, I'll get back to you on it. That's it, if, you, if you're not fast, you're last. But me and Dennis are big fans of Mark Efron. Obviously, I've turned you into a Mark Efron fan, so I'm a Mark Efron fanboy. Uh, so I think he'll go all the way. I think he's got the looks, the personality, and he can punch. He can really punch. Who do I think is going to be on the comeback trail? I think Frankie Gavin beats Josh Kelly, and you heard it here first. Frankie, knock Josh Kelly out. I think next gen is a load of shit from Sky, they're serving us up utter poo poo. Uh, I think Frank Warren is on his last legs. Why don't BT Sport come out and announce the deal with Frank Warren? Why is it all under wraps? I'm hearing from my man in the dam that uh, around the campfire everybody says that BT Sport have given Frank Warren pilot episodes. This is what I'm hearing on the grapevine. So, who knows? Maybe it's true, maybe it ain't. But uh, that's what I'm hearing. So, but like I said, we, 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 it remains to be seen. I could be wrong, but I'd like to see BT Sport come out and announce uh, what the deal is. I think that Frank Warren is a good promoter. He gets people the chances. He, got, he delivered for Robin Reed, didn't he? WBC world title in Italy knocked him out. So, he knows how to, how, when the time is right. It's like he keeps delaying the Billy Joe against Golovkin. How much more can he delay it? Golovkin is 38 in it next year. I, I, he's had about f nearly 40 fights. How much longer can he delay it? It remains to be seen. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I'd like to see anyway. So. Oh, going Come on, what was the here? Great, lock that. So, but yeah, that's what that's what I like to see. I like to see. Uh, I'd like to see Golovkin fight Billy Joe. That's the fight I'd like to see. I'd like to see uh, Mark Efron fight Liam Cameron at 160 pound. I think he struggles at 160, Mark Efron. I think that's a great fight. I'd like to see Tyler Denny. I'd like to see Tyler Denny against Liam Cameron for Commonwealth in July or June. I'd like to see that. End of June. I'd like to see Brian Rose against Liam Cameron. Brian Rose, Mark Efron or Tyler Denny. I'd like to see them, one of them three fight Liam Cameron for Commonwealth. I'd like to see Tommy Frank against Josh Whale. I'd like to see Tyson Fury against Joshua, Anthony Joshua. I'd like to see Joshua fight Wilder next. If we don't fight him next, it ain't never gonna happen. I'd like to see Yui F I like Ingram Jones, uh, Nut House Podcast, New Age Podcast, The Boxing Coalition, Fight Talk, uh, when I first started out doing my first interviews online, the first one I did was October 2016 with Ingram. I'll tell you what happened. And I said something in the interview. If you go on to Bayloic TV, the first one I ever did, I said, Coogan and James are like Eddie and Frank's men, aren't they? They only ask their questions. That, and that's not a slight on them. They're not going to ask them certain questions, are they? That, it's going to mess it up for them because it's their job, in it? I don't do this for a job, and I. My job's down there at that car pitch, messing about with cars, which I can't stand at the moment. But it's that time of year now, isn't it, to start, start cracking on. 
but that's this is their job innit I don't need this for a job just giving an opinion they have to go actually put the work in so the last thing they want to do is piss everybody off so they want to be everybody's pal don't they so I said look they're Eddie and Frank's men which they are now Coogan and James didn't like that James Helder rung Dennis up say now Dennis your lad said this your lad said that Dennis says so what well we're, we're, well we need to tell Ingram to, uh, to to get it to get it took off that I want it cutting out because if not I'm going to have legal people on on the scene so Dennis says well look you do that and I'll back Ingram Dennis has got lawyers on retainers all year round he will just tell them to back Ingram up because obviously it was stuff that I'd said and Dennis is like oh what have you done now so, so what do you mean he said I've had that James Elder on the phone telling tales so when I seen James Elder at Wales at Cardiff a few weeks later he didn't say fuck all to me did you James he went how's it going are you a porky rass I said you know who I am I took your drinking around Manchester and picked the tab up and you broke the blind in my missus's car if you remember sat in the back sat in the back of my missus's estate car because I, I bought her an estate and you had one of them blinds that go down you know to, so sun don't get in on my babies and he opened it because it clips onto the door panel it flipped it straight up and broke James Elder I've got a receipt in there 63 quid for you and I ain't asked you for it because I'm not that type of kid so you got out to say James Elder give me a ring but don't be giving my phone number out to people in boxing James we know who you gave the phone number to don't we don't be doing that because I'll just block them anyway I'll change my number but don't be giving my phone number out yet again all right but uh, other than that no I ain't got a problem with them but Dennis told them don't be firing bullets for Eddie and James you know what we were on about James so a little lesson don't be tickle tackling if you've got something to say James say it Ingram asked me questions and I gave him proper answers so stop trying to be a big cheese up Eddie's arse and Frank's because you and your mate Coogan have become embarrassing lately and if I have to say it to your faces I will next time I see you I saw your mate Coogan up at Bramall Lane he didn't say anything to me I ain't got a problem with yours I think what you've done for boxing is brilliant. What they've done with the IFL, you've got to give them the, the you've got to give them the kudos. But it's the things that happen in the background there, and people always tell you, don't they? But I ain't got a problem with them. Coogan's the best in the game at his job. He's very patient. His questions are well thought out. We don't give me like the other one. Very polished, very patient, and he can draw the questions out. Plus, my close friend David Allen loves Coogan to bits, so he is very, very polished. And what he has done, helping Eddie Earn grow matchroom, he deserves a lot of respect, Coogan. And I think, I think there's a future for him doing what he does. I think, I think personally, Coogan will go from doing IFL. I think he'll still be partners with James, but I think a couple of people have said this to me, and a couple of people in the know. I said that he will have his own chat show one day. I don't think he'll, no, I don't think just yet. I think he's got so much to do in boxing. But don't be surprised if in the next five years you see Coogan Cassius with his own chat show on TV. He might do something like at Sky. You know, like uh, that's, that thing Eddie Earn were on the other morning, that Saturday morning. What, he's on that football program where they have a chat and all that and they, ask him, they have guests on I think Coogan could do something like that at Sky and then they could work him into something doing something something a bit like not, not Graham Norton something a bit laddish but because he, he can be a bit chavvyish can't he Coogan but when it gets down to it I think he's very polished but the other one is rough as a bag of spanners isn't he but they complement each other, don't they, chalk and cheese? So they've done well, and I, I, I think they've done good. I think you should get a lot of pats on back. But if you've got out to say, say it to me, Peria. But getting back to the boxing, the next gen, I don't think that these next gen shows have been very good for the year, and I think they've made him look very poor. And I think they've put boxing back. Them are these next gen shows are shocking. 
Which brings me to Cora Ben. Bit of exercise trying to get out there. Connor Ben's fighting a guy that it, it, it's, uh, I can explain it. The guy who Connor Ben fights next is shocking, isn't it? He's an 140 pound guy fighting at 147. It's shocking. And they're fighting him as a warm up fight to fight that guy who's 5'5 five, five and 3. What? what? What's going on? Eddie, what? You've got guys that need warm up. How, mu how much more can you rinse this Conor Ben Eddie? It can't be rinsed anymore, can it? Or have you noticed that Conor Ben's not going to win a British title at welterweight? He's not going to win one. If he wins one, it'll be great matchmaking, but he ain't going to win one. And are you going to cut your losses, Eddie? Where does Conor Ben go? Because I don't think he's he's going to be like his dad, and I don't think Christopher Eubank's going to be like his dad. I just don't think they're cut from the same cloth. I don't think Marvis Fraser were going to be like his dad. I don't think so. And I don't think Mike Tyson's son's going to be like his dad. Nobody is going to be... Who's going to win a world title like their old man did? Who? Tell me who. I just don't think it's there for him. Conor Ben, what, what, what's going on with him is nothing short of scandalous. He should have fought Danny Kennedy when we offered him the 25 grand. He didn't, he didn't take the offer, did he? So that's my opinion. Conor Ben needs to step it up. He just beat that guy. He got the nod. Move on from it. Why is he going back to have that fight? Because they want to milk it. And they want to milk a fight before that fight. So he's going to fight one next that's being milked. And then he's got the fight that he's just won that's being milked. So he's got two more milks. That takes him to 13-0. I mean, what's going on here? Well, I, I, how much more can Eddie Earn rinse these shows? Which brings me to Eddie Earn. Eddie Hearn, in my opinion, is raping boxing. I don't like to use that word rape, but he is raping it. Where where is he going? Where is he going now with these shows? What what's going on? How many more shows can they rinse it? Uh, how many? Because they've got Kel Brook going to Amir Khan's fight, haven't they, in the next couple of weeks. We all know, don't we? Kel will get in the ring and blah de blah But Amir beats Kel. I think Kel's had too many injuries to mess about with Amir, who, who was probably too quick for him. But Amir wants it at 147. Kel wants it at 154. Will they meet in middle? Yeah, that probably means there's going to be no belt on line. If Kel beats Amir, can he fight Charlo and beat him? If Amir beats Kel, where does Kel go? He's not going to get a job, is he? He's got a few quid, what's he going to do is play pool all day at home. So, I don't know, I think Kel's in limbo. Kel Brook, in my opinion, could have been Ray Leonard. Not in skills, in, in titles. He could have... After he beat Porter... What would I, who, who would advise him after he beat Porter to take certain fights? Eddie rinsed it and everybody got on the back so then they had to jump in with an hard one. Why? Why do that? Why would you put a welterweight in with a, a, a killer middleweight undefeated? Why would you do that? Why? You know there's light middle before middle. Why would you do that? We're told it wasn't a problem that Kel Brook were a beast. Then when he got beat, we were told, oh, he's a welterweight. Then he got beat as a welterweight, then we're told, oh, he's a light middle. If Khan beats him at light middle, what then? What, 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 where's he go? He's become like the, the guy who's like the spare wheel guy, hasn't he? To, to fix problems. He's become the chisora, hasn't he? Of the welterweight light middle division. He's been ruined. Eddie Earn ruined him after Golovkin fought him. He was never the same fighter. If he hadn't fought Golovkin and he fought Errol Spence first, I think he'd have beat him. But he's saying he's a lot better at 154 now. If anybody can do the weight right, it's Dominic Ingle. Which brings me to Dominic Ingle. I've given Dominic Ingle a lot of praise lately, but I think maybe he's getting a little bit too much praise because of the fight over Lemieux. Now, David Lemieux... Billy Joe beat him, didn't he? But were he that good? 
did he have a style that were there for, for Billy Joe? Yeah, Billy Joe's top drawer, isn't he? Billy Joe beats Canelo, doesn't he? And you flip a coin if he beats Golovkin. He's that good. And he was already a world champion undefeated. So Dominic took on a world champion that's undefeated and they fought a Canadian guy in his backyard and schooled him. Does that make Dominic Ingle a great trainer? Or, or what? I don't know. What? Who's Dominic Ingle had from his debut that's been elite? Who? Oh. Who's he had from debut that's been elite? Who's Dave Caldwell had from debut that's won a British title? Who? Oh. Did Dominic have Witter from beginning? Did he have Kel Brook from beginning? No, he didn't. Caldwell had him. So, I don't know really. Can he train? Yeah, does he know a lot about nutrition? Yeah, he does. He looks great for his age, doesn't he? He does know a lot. Of Has Dominic Ingle added anything to Billy Joe's game? Yeah, you could say he has, yeah, I think he's a lot fitter. Has he taught him anything new? No, not really. Billy could have done them things before, but he wasn't as fit, so he's a better fighter with Dominic. He's probably firing on now on 90% of what, it, what he should have been firing on, but he's got that far, firing at 65%, maybe 70%. So he's a better fighter with Dominic Ingle. So well done, Dominic Ingle. Dominic gets my vote for ring trainer at year, or in the last 12 months, best trainer from UK, because Peter Fury hasn't really been that active, has he? Uh, now I've asked Chris Sa Sanagar. He's another great, good trainer. I rate Chris Smedley's a, a great trainer. Chris Smedley's got 31 national finalists from amateurs. How many Dave Colwell got? They started out as trainers together. How many has Dave got? Has he had a national finalist in amateurs? Has Dave Caldwell had a British champion from debut? Has he? I'm hearing that Dave Caldwell uh, wants to manage Fraser Clark and train him. That's what I'm hearing. But what pedigree has Dave got? Yeah, he's trained world champions. To guys to world championships like Bell. <coughs> Which brings me back to what I was just saying now before I had to change that again after another 12 minutes. Who's Dave Caldwell trained from debut to so much as a British title? I can't think of anybody to be honest. People can say Curtis Woodhouse, who's a great fighter and a great footballer, but Curtis when he fought for a British title, brought in Adam Booth, didn't he? So Dave took him all the way to the title fight, and then when he got to his title fight, Curtis played it safe with Adam Booth, didn't he? So wh wh where does that leave uh, Caldwell? Well, I heard Caldwell spat his dummy out after that, and uh, so he didn't train Curtis for the fight after that against Willie Limon at Scotland for the Commonwealth title, and the British Ryan Rhodes trained him, that's what I heard, so as far as I'm concerned, what has he done? Yeah, he's took McDonald's to belts, haven't they, but not from debut. Got to be from debut, from my, in my opinion, got to be from debut to get all the kudos. McCracken and Frotch, from debut. Eddie Earn, Joshua and Yafai to world titles, from debut. Barry Earn. Herbie Hyde from debut in 32 years, that's it. So, vacant titles, they don't do it for me, vacant belts. No, 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 no. Frotch won a vacant belt against Pascal. That do not do it for me, even though the quality of the opposition is good. Pascal had two fights after that. He beat Diakono and Dawson, who were undefeated. And ended up with Ring Magazine belt and uh, under the £75 WBC title, like heavyweight. Frotch won other belts that weren't vacant, but for me, you've got to take belts off champions. Tony Bellew has never won a belt off a champion. British, Commonwealth, European, and a world title. All vacant belts. He'd never beat a world champion who had a belt. 
Yeah, he's beat cleverly and he beat uh, Davy Day. Cleverly is the worst pay per view ever, and Davy Day had one leg. I don't want to piss on these people, I'm just saying it as I, I see it. I've got an interview in house with Coogan Cassius and Tyson Fury. Tyson talks like I do, say it as he sees it, and he's an hero. So, why should I get abused on Twitter for speaking, for speaking the truth? I'm a realist, I don't suffer fools gladly. I'm not going to piss up the wall and tell you bullshit, I'll tell you straight. Clinton Woods with Dennis, English, British, or with it Southern Area British, Commonwealth, European and World title with Dennis. Do you know what I mean? Robin Reed, he fought the best, didn't he? Robin Reed fought Sven Ockey, Brian McGee, Frotch, Jeff Lacey and somebody else. Sven Ockey, Carl Zaggy, Brian McGee, Jeff Lacey, Carl Frotch. Frotch, Lacey, Carl Zaggy, Sven Ockey, or Brian McGee, all world champions, all undefeated when Robin Reed fought them. And Robin went one and four with them guys. But in my opinion, and CompuPox's opinion, I thought he beat Carl Zaggy, he lost a split decision. We all know he got robbed against Sven Ockey. So Robin really should have, Robin really should have gone three and two in them five fights, shouldn't he? Do you know what I mean? But that's just how boxing goes, isn't it? That's just how boxing goes. It's that fine line. Fine line. Do you know what I mean? But I, I will tell you straight, old Porky will never do you wrong. Shout out to my mate in Wales, Gerard. How are you doing, Gerard? Are you alright, mate? Coming to see you in June. Have a good, we'll have a good few days down there, mate. Alright. Tommy the Guru Allen. I'll see you down there in Wales, mate, in June. Looking forward to it, Tommy. But, uh, but yeah, uh, should be a <clears throat> should be a good rest of the season. What we've got lined up now, but things in things in boxing change very very quickly. Look at Dave Allen, for example. A riding eye, wasn't he? With his rematch against Lenroy Thomas. Now look what's happened. He's had a fight with Lenroy. He got cut in first round, it's down as a draw. Lenroy's now fighting Joe Joyce. Where does that leave Dave? Eddie can't denote for Dave now, can he? Where, where, where's Dave now? Where's Dave Allen going now? Now Eddie can't denote for him. What's Eddie going to do? Dave's probably going to have to wait now until July to get out on a card to help Kel Brook because Dave does loads of tickets, doesn't he? So he's going to be like stopgap guy, isn't he? For Eddie's shows, to beef Kel's shows up. Kel Brook, Dave Allen, Big Twinny Gav, a uh, few other lads from around here, from area. Probably throw Anthony Fowler on, a couple of next gen guys from area. Luke Campbell, who, who knows, but uh, Dave's now in limbo, isn't he? He's got to wait for July, but his July fight won't be uh, for a belt, will it? Can't be fit British because you has got that fight in May, hasn't he? Can't be fit Commonwealth if he's fighting Joe Joy. So they're gone. So what does that leave? Southern area or English, maybe. So I feel for Dave in a bit. In, 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 to be honest, I feel for him at the moment. He's probably he's probably gutted. But that's how boxing goes, isn't it? One minute you're down, the next minute you're up. But he'll bounce back. He's a tough kid. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure he's. Keeping yourself busy, he's a Twitter sensation. But uh, hashtag Turbo Trump Train Dave, if you're watching, and I know you are. But uh, boxing can have its twists and turns, can't it? That's what it can do to you. Look at George Groves, he got flogged off Frotch twice, and then he got flogged off Bad Hill Jack. Now look at him, he's juggling, isn't he? He's a world champion. He had a probably easy route at world title, didn't he? But well, no, he didn't have an easy route to that world title, to be honest, Groves. He did against Eubank in that fight, but leading up to it, he's had some tough fights. But, uh, but no, he's had it hard, George Groves. But, you know, that's boxing, isn't it? What can you do? Look at James DeGale, he got flogged against Bad Jack. 
He's been flogged against Porky Medina. He got flogged twice against Truax. People say Truax was his bogeyman. No, 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 he wasn't a bogeyman. James DeGale's skills have eroded. You know, he's in limbo. If you weren't in limbo, he wouldn't have brought Paulie Malignaggi on board. Trying to find that extra something, and that's good. If you think you're losing it, bring somebody on board. That's good if you can add something. Uh, if you can add something to your team, bring it on board. I'd like to think that there were a couple of little tweaks and little things, that, bits of knowledge that I spoke to with Carl Frotchovic years. He, I, I, he used to pick my brains and I'd tell him little bits and bats and sometimes he'd, he'd text me back and go, oh God, I never looked at it like that. So if somebody, just in conversation, if you can add something to a boxer, it's good, isn't it? It's, for example, uh, a lot of boxers now are running with them parachutes on the back, aren't they? It's called resistance training, isn't it? And you don't need to sprint as far and instead of doing 200 meter sprints, they're doing 40 meter sprints and you know, you're not, you're not expanding as much energy and so, so all these high-tech strength and conditioner guys say, but 10 years ago I, I, uh, I sent Carl Frotch one of them for his birthday. See our Carl, birthday present for you. It was a parachute. Within a few weeks of him having that, or a few months, Derry Matthews were using one. That's a true story. Training and, mo and evolution changes, doesn't it? For example, Jesse Owens. He was doing 100 metres in 10.3 seconds back in the day, wasn't he? You know, probably 98, 80 years ago or something. In the 1930s, were Jesse Owens? So he's doing 10.3 seconds. They're now running 9.6, aren't they? So it's probably about that much. People are getting fitter, aren't they? When Ali, when Ali won the title, he'd be a cruiserweight now, wouldn't he, Ali? Six foot three, under 15 stone, wasn't he? Nowadays, Joe Frazier, 199, he'd definitely be a cruiser, wouldn't he, Joe Frazier? Five foot 11 and 199. Tyson Fury, 250 pounds, 6 foot 8. Joshua, 6 foot 6, uh, 254 pounds. You know, people have got bigger and stronger. I mean, Joshua, he, he's, he's, a right, he's a right athlete, isn't he? But people have changed. People get bigger.